Hey friends, I'm Rachel Cunningham and you're listening to Joyful Love, episode 95. If you're ready to bring joy and connection back to your marriage, stick around. Each week I give you the tools to up-level your thinking, open your heart and bring joy and fun back to your relationship because it's not enough just to stay married. We want to love being married. You know, today we're going to talk about difficult relationships. We're going to talk about being married to difficult people because I know that some of y'all have chosen to love the heck out of some very difficult people. And I just want you to know that I see you. I see how difficult it is. I see that you are struggling and I see that your relationship is not always easy. And I see that some of the skills that I teach aren't as simple as you wish they would be. And if you're like, yes, Rachel, thank you. Those are my thoughts exactly. I am married to a very difficult person. My my situation feels unique. I want you to know that this is the episode for you today. So before I go on, I'm going to put out a disclaimer on this episode as I do occasionally when I talk about extremely challenging issues. I'm not talking to the person who is in a physically abusive relationship right now. I'm not even talking to the the person who's in an emotionally abusive relationship. Let's just include all the abuse, right? I'm not talking specifically to you right now. If you are in an emotionally abusive or physically abusive relationship and you feel like you are not in control of your own choices, or if you're afraid of your partner, I encourage you to seek the professional help in your area that you need so that you can find your way powerfully out of that relationship so that you can get the help and protection that you need in person. You deserve that help. Now that I've said that, you don't have to be in an abusive relationship to be married to a very difficult person. You might be married to someone who struggles with depression. You might be married to someone whose brain works very differently than yours, and you have a hard time understanding and relating with them. Or maybe your partner has a physical disability. Maybe they're in a wheelchair. Maybe they've got some physical health issues that are really difficult, and it requires you to care for them in unique ways that that maybe other people don't have to do in their relationships. Now, you've heard me say before on here that I don't ever want you to make a decision to stay in your marriage out of guilt or pressure, right? Not from your family, not from your friends or religion or heck, even me, a marriage coach. Don't stay in your relationship because of any uh, any guilt that you feel or any pressure that you feel from anyone else. That is not anyone else's decision to decide for you right? You are not defined by your marriage. Your worth is not somehow better if you stay in your marriage so that everyone else can think highly of you, okay? Only you can decide whether to stay in your relationship or not. And I want you to own that. I want you to own that it is okay to leave. And it is okay to stay. That is also a powerful choice. There's also a lot of messages out there that say, if anything is a little bit difficult or even a lot difficult in a relationship, you should just check out and leave. No, neither one is anybody's business except your own. (laughs) You get to discover what is best for you. You get to make a powerful decision for yourself. But today, Since this is a marriage podcast and not a divorce podcast, I'm going to assume that at least a part of you wants to stay. For now, you are choosing to stay married for whatever reason that's unique and special to you. You're choosing to stay with this person. You're choosing to stay with this person because they're your person, right? You feel it in your heart. You love them because when you said your vows, when you said those words through thick and thin, through sickness and in health, you knew what you were doing. 
And you're deciding to honor that because it feels right. Mm. (laughs) I did not expect myself to get emotional there, but it is such a beautiful thing to say those vows to someone and to be all in, even when it's more difficult than than you ever expected, right? If that's you, if you feel it in your bones that you're like, I want to stay with this person and yet it is so difficult. I'm talking to you today. So this is for those of you who are choosing to stay married, but your reality is that you're married to a difficult person. Again, depression, mental and physical health struggles, and and even a partner who might have unresolved trauma from their past and their relationship skills suffer because of it. I'm raising my hand here, by the way. I'm one of those difficult people sometimes to be in a relationship with. And sometimes my husband is one of those people to be that is difficult to be in a relationship with. We both have trauma that we're continuing to heal from, right? So, but these are all, you know, physical, mental trauma. All of these things can make it very difficult to be partnered with someone for life. If this is you, I encourage you, first of all, like this is the first thing I want you to do is to read the book, Codependency No More by Melody Beattie. One of the things that she says in her book towards the end is that you get to choose who you love in this life. Just make sure that you are loving them from your strengths and not from your weaknesses. It can be really easy to try to love and care for someone from our own weaknesses, right? We can, we can make choices that are, that are based on our own wounds and, and we can, you know, we have this, this wounded filter that kind of filters everything in and and we end up, you know, because of our own fears and our own inadequacies and insecurities, we can, we can often overextend our help to others when we feel responsible for their healing, right? That's one way that we can love someone from our weaknesses instead of our strengths. We can also avoid asking for help or setting boundaries out of fear that, oh, that person can't handle that right now, right? Because of where they're at, they can't handle anything. So I'll just overdo and overdo. This creates a codependent relationship. And it can be confusing and exhausting to know when to offer extra help and when to step back and trust your partner with their own journey. So that's a really good book, Codependency No More. And and that idea that we are going to, if we are choosing to love somebody, we are going to do it from our strengths, from our power within, not from our weaknesses. To know how to do this, you have to dig deep and do your own healing so that you can pause and reflect and respond from a whole and healed self instead of your own wounded self. We all have to do this to a certain extent, but when when you have a partner that's struggling with something to an intense level, you have to dig even deeper into your own healing if you want to make the relationship work. So we're going to talk about a few tips and questions today that you can ask yourself to get started on this healing journey of of loving your partner from your strengths and not your weaknesses. The number one thing that you have to start doing is to stop trying to change things that you can't control and start focusing on the things that you can control. Sometimes we make it more difficult on ourselves by focusing on the wrong things. For example, where are you wishing and fighting and pleading for your partner to be different when maybe right now they can't be? So is there something that you need to accept that this is just the reality right now? This is who they are. This is what they're dealing with. This is the struggle and I can't fix it. And instead of trying and fighting and, and, and struggling to fix it, can you learn to work with it instead of fighting with no solution? You know, a strange thing happens when you accept the things that you can't change. You actually start loving your partner fully, including the parts that they struggle with. You embrace them. 
Your love becomes unconditional in a brand new way. You might even see some beauty in it, right? For example, you might, if your partner has ADHD and forgets everything all the time, you might see how your partner's uh, neurodivergency works for them in some ways. And you might be like, oh, I love this about my partner. I love how much they can focus in this, this specific area, right? It's beautiful. And you might start like really appreciating that more. Or you might see how your partner's occasional depression encourages you to slow down and and start reassessing what matters. Or you might see how your partner's forgetfulness is an opportunity to communicate better and to understand each other better. If you can radically accept your partner for who they are right now, you might even start seeing that they're not as difficult as you once thought. Maybe just wishing that they were different instead of working with who they are is what's making it so hard. It's like there's so much good on this side, but you're not even seeing the good because you're so focused on trying to fix the negative. So ask yourself, what am I fighting against? What am I wasting my time on? What am I not accepting? What part of them won't or can't change? In one of John Gottman's studies on relationships, he found that even in the best marriages, 69% of the problems that couples face don't actually get fully resolved. These are the issues that, that have to do with our, you know, our individual makeup and our personalities and personal hangups or pet peeves. Now, before you feel hopeless on that study, that 69% of your problems probably won't be resolved. Um, it's, it, it's not a reason to be hopeless. It simply emphasizes the idea that couples must learn to manage their conflict instead of trying to eliminate it, right? It's like, oh, we have this conflict. Let's figure out how to manage it better instead of completely eradicating it, right? In other words, Stop trying to control what you cannot control and focus on managing what you can control. So ask yourself, if this is how my partner is, if if I cannot change it, what is in my control? What can I ask for? What can I do differently? Is there anything that I can change to make this part of our lives even simpler? This is not giving away your power. I want you to know this. This is not giving away your power. It's the opposite of it. Trying to control what you cannot control is wasting your energy and giving away your power. But focusing on what what you can control and what you can do and what you can ask for and what you can change is stepping into your power. It's being wise about what you focus your energy on. It puts you in the driver's seat of your own life. It puts you in the driver's seat of of understanding and processing your emotions. And yes, even your ability to stay present and experience the joy that is in your relationship. It puts you in control when you focus on what you can control. So another thing that we do is, is to get annoyed at our partners for doing the things that we often do ourselves, right? We often mirror each other. So instead of getting upset at your partner for not, let's say, caring for themselves or not picking up after themselves, where might you need to care for yourself more? Where might you need to pick up after yourself more? Even if it's in a totally different area than your partner, can you look within first and say, where, you know, I'm really judging my partner for this. I'm criticizing their you know, their habits and their their struggles in this area. But where am I the same? Where do I do the same thing that my partner does? This happens so many times, you guys. So many times we 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 want to shift blame and we want to say, well, if they would do this, then it would be easier for me to to fix this area in my life. Can we stop doing that and just focus and say, oh, this is an area in my life that I struggle with too. Let me figure out how to fix that first, right? Focus on what you can control. And then the next one, number two, is to tap into your partner's wisdom. So for example, if you're if you ask your partner for help and they have a hard time following through on what you agreed on, 
why not get curious about what they would do differently? So many times we want to say, you should be doing this. And why don't you do this? And if you would just do this, then it would make life more easier, right? <laughs> we want to just like be the one to like put forth all the suggestions. But what if you took a step back and just said, hey, you are a very wise person on yourself. You know more about yourself than I do. I, I'm curious. What do you think would help in this situation? Right? What am I not seeing that maybe you are? If you could change anything in this situation and make this part of our lives easier, what would you do? It's a great thing to communicate your needs to your partner, but it's also so important to welcome their input and be open to their ideas. Don't be quick to shut down your partner's thoughts if they don't resonate with you at first. Right? Why not try it their way this time? Just see what happens. You'll start to understand about each other more when you can have a little give and take in how you solve problems. Number three is if things are really difficult, if your partner is mentally or physically struggling in an area, it is so important to ask them to get the professional help that they need. For example, if your partner is depressed, let them know that you love them dearly, that you are willing to stay and that you want to live with them. You want to partner in this life with them, but that you need to see that they are willing to get help too. You need to see that they care enough about you to work on themselves and to work on your relationship. So encourage therapy or a doctor's appointment you might even offer to help set it up for them, right? Sometimes people who are struggling, especially with emotional and mental health, they need extra help. They need extra support in getting that professional help that they need. So offer that support. And if they refuse, this is so important, you guys. So many times I've, um, you know, I've, I've coached clients who are really asking their partners to get help and, their partners want to put it off and put it off and put it off. So you need to have a plan in place if that happens. If they refuse, you're gonna need to have a boundary in place for you to uphold for yourself. That boundary that you uphold might be something simple like, or maybe not so simple, but <laughs> something big, like you're gonna have an intervention with family and friends, right? To, to back you up next time and to request them to get help. It could mean that you're gonna ask them to move out until they might get the help that they need, or it might be something smaller than this. Think about your unique partner and a boundary that would actually be helpful. A boundary is not to come from a place of judgment or to, to create harmful you know, ultimatums. Good boundaries actually help you to step into a powerful position of caring for yourself and encouraging your partner to care for themselves. A boundary is caring and loving on the, on the utmost level. A boundary is caring and loving and moves you towards a solution, not just like to a big fighting fest, right? So, okay, lastly, number four is to focus on and highlight the good often, right? You are choosing to be in this relationship with someone who's not always easy to relate with. When relationships are difficult, it can be easy to brush aside the good and ignore them and stop appreciating each other and to forget about what you love about them. So remember to welcome in appreciation and go have some fun with your honey often. Okay, go have some fun, appreciate each other, tell each other the small things and the big things that you appreciate. Okay, so to tie all of this together, to tie these four tips together, I'm going to tell you some questions. I want you to write them down and actually answer them, right? Don't just kind of go, oh, those are great questions. I should get to them later. Ask yourself these questions, write them down. I've said it before. I've said, I'll have say it a million more times. When you write down the thoughts and the, the answers that your brain gives you and that your heart is speaking loud and clear, when you write it down, it's a powerful way to change and to actually implement the things that you need to implement. So here's some questions to ask yourself. What are some things, number one, what are some things about my partner that I can accept and stop fighting against? 
Number two, where can I manage this situation better instead of trying to change something I can't change? Number three, what are some areas that I still need to do some healing in, just like my partner? In other words, where are we mirroring each other's habits and behaviors? How can I be an example of what's possible in this area? That was like several questions in that number three, but that's okay. I'm actually going to write down these questions in the show no notes on my website. So you guys can go there and, and get those these questions. Okay, number four, what is my plan for getting help where we both or I specifically need it? Where Where am I going to get help in this? Because again, you guys, we do not have to do this alone right? If you are in a very difficult relationship, why not go get some help for it? Okay. Number five, does my partner need professional help? If they do and they, and they refuse to get the help, what is my personal boundary that I will uphold next? Number six, what is good about my partner this week? How can I appreciate the good in both of us? Okay. These tips and questions are going to help you to step into your power again in the relationship. They're going to help you to love bigger from your own strength, not from your weaknesses. Okay, that's what I have for you guys today. Reach out to me if you'd like my help with any of this. And if you know someone who could use these tips because they're married to a difficult person, I invite you to share the love by sharing this episode. Okay, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening to Joyful Love. If you'd like to know more about my work, come visit me at rachelcunningham.com. That's Rachel spelled with an A-E-L, Cunningham.com.